Do you want to improve at a quicker pace? Instead of just understanding concepts, you'll learn how to implement them directly into your driving. What makes it effective is the approach and practical drills. Together, we're gonna focus on breaking down those complex concepts into small digestible bits that are simple to understand. Everything from the course was tested and refined during the years in coaching sessions, so what I ended up with was the ones that I saw were the most effective. Let's elevate your racing skills together. Now for the track guide. For turn 1, what I'm using as a reference for braking is the white line on the pit exit, this white line in front of the car. I want to brake slightly past it, so I'm also looking at the curb on the left side, but I don't try to brake very, very late into this corner just because this corner with this car is a bit counterintuitive. If you're gonna brake too hard, you will overheat the tires too much and the grip is gonna fade away into, into the corner. So we will do the opposite, we will brake a bit earlier than the car is capable of and we will try to not put as much temperature in the front tires. We're also using a lower brake bias from the fixed setup, we're using 55.5, I think you can use a 50.0 and still be fine. But after I'm applying the brakes right now, I'm trying to mount the curb on the left side so I can open up the corner. So I'm braking a bit with one, two degrees to the left, turn it like this. It's very minimal, but it makes a difference while you're gonna turn into the corner because you will have a larger radius and the larger radius means easier to carry a bit more speed. Now, bleeding off the brakes, and it's important here to turn late. So notice that I went straight a lot of time and then I'm turning. What a lot of drivers are doing into this corner, they are taking an early apex. And because you don't have that much space on the exit, and it's actually very easy to pick an off track, this won't be consistent enough. Maybe it will be a bit quicker in some attempts, but overall it's gonna be worse. So we're gonna give up a bit of entry speed by going a bit more straight and then turning, but we'll have a far superior exit. So while turning into the corner, notice that we break very, very soft. This is a corner in which you arrive with your top speed almost, and we're breaking 60% maximum and then quickly dropping. Don't need to break that much. I tested higher brakes and it didn't work so fine. So for more consistency, for a better exit out of here, brake softer. And in terms of apex, you want to get very close to this grayish part of the curb without going completely over it. So the tire is kissing that upper part of the curb, but it's not going over it. The suspension won't like it. And also notice that whenever I'm touching the curb, I'm giving in 100% throttle. I'm not modulating it on the exit. This car has a lot of downforce, especially in the fixed setup. So you can get away with blimping to 100%, but it also is going to give you some rear grip. The moment that you go on power, the rear tires got some weight on them. And because we're trail braking into those lower percentages, the car almost feel like it's about to snap. So whenever you give it that throttle, it, stay, it makes the car more stable and it makes you able to carry that speed in the corner. This is a quite decent corner for me. So keep the same approach and you will be consistently quick there. Going into the next corner, I'm braking when I'm mounting this curb. And again, you don't want to brake very hard. Name of the game now, it's finding minimum brake pressures. That's it. We're braking on the curb just because we're not braking hard. So we can take advantage of using the curb to open up. If we would have braked very, very hard, then the braking efficiency wouldn't be ideal by mounting the curb. So we, we would have had to give up on opening the the corner by using less track but because we're not breaking hard we can do it so picking around 40 percent this is critical here picking 40 and not 60 or 65 or something like that now trailing into the corner the car will feel very very light at this point so still staying in third it's important when you go on power to go very aggressively so you get that grip back to the rears because the all the weight is on the front and the car is going with the nose downwards on the left and the rear is lifted so whenever you go on power like this you add a bit of weight to the rears and it makes the car more and more stable our goal will be to touch with the right tires this curb on the right side 
So we use all the track because the next corner is an easy flash. So you just have to go a bit to the left and then turn with out dropping the throttle. But you have to cut a bit the curb on the inside. So be mindful of that. Now going into the next corner, I'm mounting the curb on entry and I'm barely, barely breaking. In my mind, I want to do like 5% breaking. In the actual fact, I'm doing 7%. So try to lower your what you think that you need to break into this corner and lower it because you will always break harder. So if you put your goal to break like 5%, for sure you will break more. So for me, this happens. So I break seven instead of five. But this is the main idea, slight light breaking and you want to mount this curb. This was a bit too much. I would say that this right now can be a bit scary because the moment that you hit the curb, you go on power again. So you have a good exit, but the car can feel a bit loose. So if we look on our my steering wheel, I go left and then I have to do some small, small corrections. It wasn't that scary, but it can become scary if you do it lap after lap. So you can cut a bit less but still cut more than you think. So the my advice would be here to not go all the way on it, just to kiss it a bit less. Now going into the next corner, I'm looking at the 13 Marshall post from here. When I arrive at it, I'm applying the brakes and in fourth gear, I'm trying to manage the rears being loose by again being very early on power. In the chicane I'm breaking after I mount this, this curb. So again, like in turn two, you want to break while mounting the curb so you can open up the corner. So I'm breaking right now in third gear. And well, the moment that I cut this curb, I want to be back on power like right now. And you have to be aggressive with the moment that you go on power because you can gain a lot of time in this chicane being like one tenth earlier on power. In the next corner in fourth gear, I'm just giving it like 3% braking, 5% braking and turning into the corner. I want to have the car more on the left, so center left for the next one, because in the next one I'm bringing all the way to the left and then I'm turning while downshifting to third. You will go a bit on this curb, then putting the power down. Off track limit is having the right tire on the white line. So if you have that, that's fine. Now going into the corner, this is a heavy high speed corner. So you want to minimize your throttle lift. That's the only thing that you want to do here. And you can apex a lot earlier than you think, just because the curb on the inside can almost suck the car on the right side. So firstly, I'm touching this curb. The moment that I touch it, I'm turning while doing a lift and here I want to get this part of the curb. So get it more in the middle upper part of it and going over it. It's going to be very easy to do it and you can even force it more like I did. Like right now for me, I didn't, I wasn't so stressed on the exit. Usually if you push it very, very hard on the exit, you're fighting a bit the car to turn more to the right side because you're afraid of picking up the off track. So I think that's that's more lap time into this corner, maybe one tenth more if you hold a higher throttle percentage, meaning if you don't lift that much. The next corner will be very similar to turn two. Again, you want to break on this curve. So as you can see, this, there's a team in this track. We want to use these curbs as much as we can to open up the corners. So I'm mounting this curb and notice that I'm, my left tires are completely on the curb right now. And while turning into this corner, it's important to cut this curb very, very much. Again, you want to cut it as much as you can and put the throttle early enough. Even earlier it was possible. So I lost in this corner, I think one and a half tenths. I could have been gone a bit deeper without getting the off track. So you can carry a bit more speed. Going into the second to last corner, breaking point for me is almost in the middle of this curb on the right side. Again, you want to break on the curb. You want to open up as much as you can. You won't go to second gear. You will stay in third because that extra gear will give you a bit more speed than getting the engine braking. And on the exit, you want to have the car all the way to the right side with the left tires touching this uh, white line that marks the pit entry. For the last corner, the breaking point will be this white line again that marks the pit entry. You want to break very, very light, not more than 15%. And then while going on power, it's very important at this point in time to be close to this curb on the right. You can even put a bit the tire, the right tire on the grayish part and you'll still be okay. And in short, that's a track guide of the Hungaro ring with SF Super Formula lights. I hope you have a great week ahead and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.